Hello and welcome to the explosive weekend debate with me Ayushman Singh Jamwal ladies and gentlemen politics surrounding the Ram Mandir ceremony intensifies as the opposition continues to accuse the BJP of politicizing the event for electoral gains after accusing the BJP of political gimmickry ahead of the 2024 Lok Sabha elections Congress leader and Karnataka minister D Sudhakar has taken it a step forward comparing the Ram Mandir inauguration to a political stunt similar to the Pulwama terror attack where 40 CRPF jawans were martyred ladies and gentlemen in February 2019 that's when the Pulwama attack took place he claims it is a strategy to influence voters now this comes as the congress top brass remains undecided over the invitation for the consecration ceremony while some congress leaders hail rajiv gandhi as the original proponent of the ram mandir in ayodhya this also comes as some congress allies have even gone on to say that january 22nd should be a black day and are praying for the return of the babri mosque the big question remains is the opposition shooting itself in the foot with its constant and often confused politicking and more importantly is the politics now hitting a new low that's our top focus ಎಂಟ್ರೀ ಹಿಂದೆಲ್ಲ ಗೊತ್ತಲ್ಲ ಪುಲ್ವಾಮಾ ತೋರಿಸೋದು ಈಗ ರಾಮ ರಾಮನ ಫೋಟೊ ತೋರಿಸ್ತಾರೆ ಜನ ದಟ್ಟರಿಲ್ಲ ಎರಡು ಬಾರಿ ಮೂರ್ಖರಾಗಿದ್ದೀವಿ ಮತ್ತು ಮೂರನೇ ಸರಿ ಆಗಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ನನಗೆ ಭರವಸೆ ದಿಸ್ ಶೋಸ್ ದಿ ಆಂಟಿ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಸೆಟ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಆಂಟಿ ಭಾರತ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ರಿಗ್ರೆಸಿವ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಸೆಟ್ And let's get to our guests who are joining us on the debate. I'm joined by Prashant Ji, a spokesperson of the BJP, George Korean political analyst, as well as Vinay Kumar, political analyst on the broadcast. Good evening, gentlemen. And thank you for joining us on CNN News 18. George Korean, I'll come to you first. A poor choice of words by the Karnataka minister. Wouldn't you agree? Well, good evening to you and to my co-panelists and your audience. Uh, I don't want to second uh, D. Sudhakar here. Uh, he may have put, put, put forward his views uh, with regards to the 2024 election. But having said that, uh, I want to give my best wishes for the consecration ceremony of the Ram Temple, and I, I hope that you know this will bring in peace and prosperity for Bharat and India uh, uh, and the people of this nation. Uh, uh, having said that, you know we cannot ignore the fact or you know uh, deny the 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 demolition of uh, the Babri Masjid in 1992 by BHP and you know the <coughs> Ram Sevaks and. Uh, Post that, the Supreme Court has given a judgment where, you know, fair enough, in 2019, where the construction should happen uh, in Ayodhya for the Ram Temple. Uh, and uh, 5th of August, the foundation stone was laid. And, you know, BJP has been uh, using this Ram Mandir issue uh, and polarizing it for a political, it's a political tool uh, in shortly. And, you know, to uh, polarize the voters, uh, the Hindu voters. And let me also make it very clear to your audience that, you know, the congress people are the people with the congress ideology who believe in the secular ideology are even more you know uh, believing in lord ram and you know they are more in in a way you know they are more uh, ram bucks uh, to uh, so to say and uh, we strongly believe that you know we want to uh, take care of every uh, religion and beat every belief and safeguarding that uh, constitutional thing and i also i would like to add that you know the bjp is trying to make it a constitutional you know they using the constitution because the prime minister holds a constitutional position be the uttar pradesh chief minister they going to address the nation from there so they are making political you know uh, they could have avoided that uh, having said that uh, and uh, we welcome the move that they have invited the congress leaders as well for this inauguration and i hope that you know uh that's what we will have we will have our uh, best wishes for the entire uh, consecration ceremony yeah but i used to have an answered my question do you wouldn't you say d sudhakar used a poor choice of words when talking about the consecration ceremony calling it similar to what the bjp did with the pulwama attack yes or no is is, is but, but basic I question i would i wouldn't these are two different uh, things uh, it's just that you know it, uh, it's it's a coincidence you can say that you know it's happening before the parliamentary elections be 2019 or 2024 but uh, linking the, the two uh, would not be uh, appropriate at this point in time 
would not be appropriate at this point of time. But you still agree that the BJP is using this for political gains. I want to remind you of what Rajiv Gandhi also did uh, back in 1986 when he opened the locks of the Babri Masjid, of the Babri Temple when it comes to uh, allowing uh, Hindu devotees to pray over there. Also, he started his 1989 campaign from Faisabad saying he wants to bring Ram Rajya. So let's not shy away from the fact when it comes to politicking and you know, the essence of Lord Ram, everyone has used it. At least BJP has had a consistent stand. Uh, now, the BJP, uh, now many Congress leaders even say that Rajiv Gandhi was the one who was the original campaigner for the Ram Mandir. And so, why isn't uh, Sonia Gandhi, Malikajun Kharge, or, or Adhir Ranjan Chaudhary respecting his legacy and just taking a decision on attending the consecration ceremony? How will they lose any political points for that? But then the entire appeasement angle comes in. But I want to get uh, Prashant GS's uh, point on this. You've already spoken today and you have said that. Uh, this shows the mindset of the of the Congress camp when it comes to, uh, you know, playing politics around these issues of national interest. Uh, George Kurian on our panel is making it very clear that he doesn't agree with what the Congress party says. But at the same time, it seems the Congress party is caught in this state of flux. Some people are saying that what happened, uh, what we have achieved in Ayodhya is something that Rajiv Gandhi started. Other Congress allies are even saying that 22nd should be a black day. This confused politicking of the Congress party, it's obviously advantage BJP. Ayushman, firstly, Congress has never stood up for Lord Ram because it is the same Congress and its Indi Alliance <coughs> partners who filed a petition saying that Lord Ram is not present. So, therefore, they were the ones who argued against the existence of Lord Ram. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, if any congressman today comes up and says, I am a Ram Bhakt, I sing bhajans, I do puja, it's only probably he's making statements to ensure that some people vote for him. That's all. Because he thinks that by uh, making those statements, he can get some votes. But people are not falling for these things. People know that it is a movement which has lasted 500 years. And now it has turned to reality after in the last three decades. So that people won't fall for this. And the dirty politics that Congress is playing about uh, linking it to Pulwama and saying that a Pulwama attack, it, it, it did not happen and so on and so forth, shows the mindset they have. They don't even respect the uh, soldier who has laid down his life for the country. And they are using it for political tools. They did it in 2019. They are doing it now. And now they are doing it for Prabhu Sri Ram. For what joy? For to, to appease whom are they doing this? It is a Ram temple being done. Prana Pratishthapana is being done. All leaders have been invited irrespective of parties. And Congress and its India Alliance partners are not ready to come. Why? If they attend the Ram temple, will they become less secular? Are, are you saying that attending Ram uh, Mandir inauguration will not be a secular event? Why so? Because they should learn lessons from Mr. Ansari, who was a petitioner in the original case, who showered petals on... Uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi when he came to Ayodhya uh, the other day. So therefore, people have to learn to understand the law of the land, the verdict given by the Supreme Court and the event is taking place. And on Jan 22nd, it's a historic day and Congress is not able to digest the fact that people now are standing up for, the relief, for their beliefs on religion and ethics and ethos which has been lost. The cultural ethos which has been which was lost, people are standing up for it and they're displaying it with a very, what do you say, proud uh, sense to say, yes, I am a Hindu, I am a Ram Bhak, and I would be, uh, I would do whatever it takes for uh, the Ram Temple. So Absolutely. Therefore, why is Congress afraid of that? Absolutely. And where is politics in that? Right, Prashant. Where is politics Prashant. in Ram? There's Absolutely, no but, but regardless, even if you are playing politics uh, on it, Prashant, at the same time, it's been a consistent stand of the BJP. That is my point. Consistently, ever since the genesis of the of the BJP, after the Palampur uh, statement which came in from the BJP camp, it is a consistent stand that it is a political mission to realize the Ram Mandir in Ayodhya. There is a consistency in that, no matter what Aishman, the Congress the party no, tries to say. Aishman, the historic wrongs we are wanting to correct. Uh, agreed, agreed. Wrongs that have happened, we are correcting it. Agreed, agreed. So and, the and, of, then, uh, and then, and then, shying away. I, I agree with you, Prashant, but my entire yes. point is, what is the Congress trying to gain when, you know, Rahul Gandhi goes out and says, I'm a Janayodhari Brahmin, I'm a Shiv Bhakt, 
But when it comes to this Ram Mandir, while George Kurian over here is pointing out that uh, the Congress workers are bigger and better Ram Bhakts than the BJP, then why this indecision over attending the consecration ceremony? Why not? Uh, why allow your own leaders to send out such you know diverse political messages, which some are for, some are against? It muddies the entire political water surrounding the Congress Party, and this has never worked for the Congress Party when it comes to this indecision surrounding Hindutva. This soft peddling has never worked in favour of the Congress Party. You, Madhya Pradesh is for you to uh, see, you know, where uh, while, uh, while Kamal Nath was taking a strong stand saying that they welcome the Ram Mandir, they, they, are, uh, they are, you know, pro-Hindu, they uh, are proponents of Hindutva. Udhyanidhi Stalin uh, says Sanatan Dharma is dengue and malaria and the Congress top brass doesn't even have the backbone to sever ties with the DMK on the, on the road to 2024. So that is the political state right now. Uh, Vinay Kumar, I want to bring you in on that point. This <coughs> muddying of the political waters that we see around the Congress party. Now, many leaders, many allies have already made statements against the consecration ceremony that it is a political stunt. If tomorrow Sonia Gandhi decides to go for the consecration ceremony, she will be accused of being a political hypocrite. Now, on the other hand, if she doesn't uh, go for the consecration ceremony, the BJP will say, look, this is another insult to Lord Ram. Uh, they are not even following Rajiv Gandhi's legacy. So, it's a catch-22 for the Congress party. They've shot themselves in the foot. Uh, Ayushman, Ram Mandir is not a political stunt and the concept of Ram Rajya, it is not an hypothesis or a, a hypothetical concept. Ram Rajya envisions a society where the government actions are not dictated by the Darwin theory of survival, survival of the fittest. Ram Rajya strives for a system which is focused for the survival of the weakest. It emphasizes inclusivity and uplift those at the bottom of the socio-economic pyramid. This is a governance model. This is not just related to religion. The idea of Ram Raj is something which was implemented thousands and thousands of years back and the most scientific, the most democratic model. The real democracy, you can say, is Ram Rajya. And when the BJP says Antyodai, that is the person standing at the bottom of the socio-economic pyramid Antyoda is the real Ram Rajya. Antyoda is the idea of governance. And Ram and Ram Rajya, I think it is something which India, including all parties, they can boast it across the globe. That it's the real concept of, you know, pure concept of democratic governance, democratic form of governance, which the world must adopt. And we are, we are discussing here that there should be a Ram Mandir. It is a political stunt or not. I, I feel pity on that. And again, uh, Ayushman, the holistic approach, the idea of Ram Raj extends to economic policy, mm -hmm. fostering sustainable development and benefit the entire population. It does not, you know, uh, 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 divide the population. And all the nations must adopt such a governance model, which promotes justice, inclusivity and welfare. And this will pave the way for global community where the pursuit of happiness becomes a sheer endeavor, transcending borders, Ayushman, and fostering a more harmonious world. I agree, I agree. This is something which we must celebrate. I agree. It's, 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 it's India's cultural power that is taking a global shape now because the inauguration of the Ram Temple is a global event. Let's not forget that, you know, and that is the significance of it. And at the same time, Given the consistency of the BJP when it comes to the entire Ram movement, they will definitely reap the political rewards. By politicking around this, the way the opposition camp is doing, the way the Congress party is doing, while not even deciding whether they want to uh, come or not, the left at least had the gumption to say we're not going, but the Congress party is still not uh, deciding. That will only work against the Congress party. The Congress only has things to gain if it says we, are, we will go to the consecration ceremony, we will honour Lord Ram. They only have political mileage to gain. So, George Kurian, where is the indecision coming in? And now D. Sudhakar also has brought up Pulwama. You have leaders like Digvijay Singh, Udit Raj, Sam Petroda, who back in the day, right after Pulwama, also said, where is the proof of the Balakot strike? They muddied the political waters then also, so be it national security, be it Hindutva, Congress constantly seems to be shooting itself in the foot. 
Well, I, I don't quite agree to that. Uh, the Congress Party, as I said, you know, there are more Ram Bucks in the Congress ideology who believe in Congress. No, no, I think uh, Kuriya, than, 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 your definition than of Ram Bucks is different. And no, no, I think no, Prashant, I think, Prashant, uh, let him speak. Uh, you'll get enough time to counter. Please, Mr. Kurian, go ahead. Prashant, give me the courtesy. So, Prashant, I would like to say that, you know, uh, what, what is, you know, disturbing Mr. Prashant or be the Bharatiya Janata Party the, that when you know, the Congress Party is saying that there is, they are no, in, in no disagreement to the Ram Mandir and the only, the only thing is that the, the Congress Party or be the opposition is, you know, uh, uh, denying that, you know, they, there shouldn't have been a speech by the Prime Minister of India and uh, Prime Minister, uh, the Chief Minister of Uttar Pradesh uh, or be the uh, RSS Chief Mohan Bhagwat, not to make it politic, not to politicize the entire uh, consecration ceremony. Keep it, keep it the way it is. Uh, let let the pujaris do the all the ceremony as it is. And uh, uh, there was no problem at all. But uh, the the Bharatiya Janata Party is trying to milk it and you know polarize it okay. and to make but, it. But Mr. 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 Kurian, Mr. Kurian, Congress Party. But, yeah, but Mr. Kurian, the legacy of the Congress Party is also that Rajiv Gandhi ordered the locks to be opened when it comes to allowing prayers at the site. N.D. Tiwari and Bhuta Singh, who were ministers, were also sent for the Shilanya ceremony. What was that then? Well, as I said, the Congress Party, there is, there is no two ways about it. The Congress Party believes in Ram and there is no two ways about it. Be it Sanatan Dharma. No, no, that wasn't Dharma. political. What I'm saying, because now that we have a Supreme Court judgment and oppose that the Ram Mandir is being built, it's a very nice thing. I, as I said earlier, we hope that you know this will bring in peace and prosperity for the, the crores of people of India, and it will be a, it will be good for everyone. Uh, having said that, not to politicize the event, uh, looking at the you know in the run up to 2024 election, that is the only thing that you know the Congress Party or the India Bloc is trying to make it make it uh, visible at this point in time. I, I, still, I, I didn't understand that. What, what is the Aishman, India Alliance trying to make visible? You can't understand what he says. See, you have to understand one thing, Aishman. Congress and its supporters are in event. denial. One second, one second, one second. You're saying that the politicize that by Prime Minister Modi going to Ayodhya, inaugurating a new uh, railway station, a new airport, which will only help more people uh, attend, uh, you know, uh, darshan at uh, the Ayodhya Mandir. At the same time, it will boost the economy of the local of the entire city. That is political in nature for you. Well, it's a it's a nice thing that you know Ayodhya is going to be you know. Renovated and you know the, there will be employment. The local employment will happen. There is no two ways about it. But having said that, you know the BJP is trying to build up this narrative at this point in time with respect to Ayodhya Ram Mandir, and you know because we all know that 2024 is just a few months away, and so it's it's nothing but you know polarizing. Pol but, politicizing but, but you would agree that the BJP has not been inconsistent about this. They, Ram Mandir has been front and center in every manifesto they've put out since the time the party was incepted. Agree, So, so I don't understand what kind of new kind of theory you're trying to maro over here by making this point. Prashant, you wanted to react. See, I think George, uh, George's and Congress's idea of a Ram Bucks, you don't know, because on one hand they say they are bigger Ram Bucks. On the other hand, they say PM Modi should not go. Why? He's a bigger Ram Buck than most of the people, so he'll also attend. So, what is the problem when Congress it is a denying invitation? Mamta Banerjee doesn't want to come. Sita Ram Echuri, his name has both Sita Devi and Ram, and that man says I will not come. So Sita Ram Echuri doesn't want to come. Congress people, uh, Congress leaders are uh, not deciding whether to attend or not. They are not even uh, wanting to make statements about their attendance in the event. If all the parties come together, will the politics there? Congress and its Gamandia Gatbandan are creating politics there. When the Ayodhya Trust has issued or uh, given out invites for all of them. If they attend the ceremony as dignitaries, and when all political parties are on one stage, how can you say it's a somebody is getting advantage of that? Not at all. No, at the same Congress time, is only trying Prashant, to at the same who time, a the minority same, vote bank by doing this. Prashant, at the same they time, want I want to also point this out. Bank, I also want to point this out, it's the misinformation at the no. same time. Salman Khurshid comes in and says that the BJP has no right to send out invitations for the uh, consecration ceremony. When did the BJP ever send out even one invitation for the consecration ceremony? It is the Ram Mandir Trust 
which is sending out the invitations for the Ram Mandir ceremony. So there is misinformation. The issue has been politicized. Congress allies are saying it's a black day. And now uh, D. Sudhakar is saying that uh, it's similar to a political stunt like Pulwama. The messaging is all over the place. And this is only, in my opinion, going to hurt the Congress party. Even in a state like Uttar Pradesh, where the Congress party has banked on for any power at the center, you have Samajwadi Party MP, an ally of the Congress party, saying that they are praying for the return of the Babri Mosque. You don't think the BJP will go hammer and tongs with this message to take on the Congress party? More and more, as the days go by, more and more ammunition is being given to the BJP. George Korean, at least some cohesive message should come in from the Congress party that don't make irresponsible statements. That, that writ at least should go out from not just the Congress camp, but to the entire India alliance. Well, uh, let, me, let me make it categorically very clear to your audience that, you know, the Congress party beat Karnataka, beat you know earlier Rajasthan or, or now Himachal Pradesh. Wherever we have the Congress government or in alliance, we are ensuring that you know we are walking on the uh, uh, on the path of uh, Lord Ram, and you know we are trying to deliver uh, our promises to the people uh, at the social uh, economic uh, bottom level, and we are ensuring that you know through our policies we are trying to preach uh, what Lord Ram meant and his uh, way of living. So there is no two ways about it, and we, we believe in Lord Ram, and there is no two ways. Uh, there is a sentiment okay. attached to Lord if you Ram believe in if you believe in lord ram should so, will you ask the samajwadi party the to ex is, is if you believe in lord ram if you believe in lord ram will you request the dmk to apologize for their remarks on sanatan dharma if you believe in lord ram will you ask the samajwadi party to expel uh, mr bark the samajwadi party mp who said that he is praying for the babri masjid to return But it, it's a prerogative of the party head, and you know yeah, that uh, becomes the prerogative has, of the party head. The party has right. never uh, seconded George the DMK stand on Sanatan Dharma, and we have made it very clear. Right. Uh, Mr. Vinay Kumar, I'll give you the final word when it comes to this discussion. I think I, I don't think George Kuren has given any substantive argument when it comes to this floundering that is taking place in the opposition camp at the same time. I mean, he's, he's like reading out the manifesto of the Congress party time and time again whenever I've asked him a pointed question. But at the same time, the optics of it is so muddy for the opposition camp. They can't even come up with a cohesive message. This entire campaign will dominate all of January and it'll culminate on the 22nd of January, 23rd onwards. All the devotees will come to a new and improved Ram Mandir. This will bolster the BJP, but the Congress and the other opposition camp uh, you know, they had the chance to be on the right side of this politically, but do you think they've squandered that entire opportunity? No, I would like to uh, uh, address a different issue. You know, what is the beauty of this Ram Mandir Ayushman? Mm -hmm. A 500 years of protected struggle. It was marked by legal battles, negotiations. What is showcases? It showcases a collective determination of the majority of uh, India to address a complex issue within the framework of a democratic society. By opting for legal channels and engaging in constructive dialogues, the Bharatiya nation society involved in the Ram Mandir struggle, it exemplifies commitment to democratic tools. And this is a message to the world. Mm -hmm. It is an idea of conflict resolution. This is the way we, which we co you can adopt for conflict resolution. And the construction of Ram Mandir therefore becomes a testament to the potency of democratic values in navigating intricate religious matters, offering a blueprint of peaceful resolution of contentious issues in diverse societies. This is the real message. And this, this message you can boast, Mr. Korean. You are trying to dig out something, you know, ugly, dirty. There is nothing like that. It's a, it's a, it's a thing which all the diverse society across this nation, they must celebrate. And there is a relation which the world community, those who are into conflict, they must learn. Right, this is a way right, of right, Mr. Kumar, I, I have the last 30 seconds left you talking about that it's a symbol of conflict resolution, but who is actually creating the conflict when it comes to uh, this entire event, which as per you, is the unifying message. I'll ask you uh, one more time, is this an opportunity lost for the opposition camp? Mr. Kumar, last 10 seconds. 
Ayushman, let me respond. Right, right. Okay, let Prashant, Prashant, I'll give you the last 10 seconds. Go ahead. Yes. See, it's not about what opposition has lost. It, it is not about opposition losing or BJP winning. They should have stood up for Bharat's cultural ethos and history, which Congress is failing to do. They're not wanting to even own up that bit. This is showing their anti-Bharat mindset, which people will definitely make note and give a befitting reply in the forthcoming elections. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. That message will uh, play a huge role in the 2024 general elections. Uh, thank you, Prashant GS, uh, George Korean and Vinay Kumar for joining us on the broadcast for this debate. Thank you very much. Uh, that's all we have to pack in on the show. But for me and on behalf of the entire CNN News 18 family, a very happy new year to all of our viewers.